What's up guys, Tech Lab here. Now I know you guys wanted us to upgrade our 6th gen old system, but to be honest, while I'm waiting for parts, I really need to get the dust out of the studio. I can't stand the dust floating around. So what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna give it a little bit of a makeover. We're gonna modernize this PC and hopefully show you guys a few tips and tricks on how to get some mishmash parts looking like new. Now, of course, the system we have is our 6th gen system. This was a system that was actually given to us. We got it for free and we had to do a few things to it, as in one of our recent videos. We had to provide a power supply, so we dropped in this EVGA 750 watt. That got the system up and running. And then we installed this Radeon RX 6600 just to really see if we could actually still game on a 6th gen CPU. Inside this system, there is a very basic motherboard. It is a H110. It's probably out of some kind of pre-build or something at some time. It's a very tiny board, but it seems to work. We've got 16 gigabytes of HyperX DDR4, 2133 RAM. Not the fastest, of course, but it's more than enough for this uh, setup that we've got here. And of course, for the CPU, we have an Intel i5-6500. Now, the system is pretty old, and of course, it looks an absolute mess. We left it in the exact state that it came to us in, with the dust and the cable management, or lack of cable management, as you can see. And of course, today, we want to actually tidy all that up and give it a new lease of life. But one thing that I am going to do first is I'm actually going to swap out this graphics card. I want to make sure that this machine is more period appropriate. So instead, we're going to be installing this GTX 980 Ti. Now, this graphics card would have been released at about the same time as the CPU, or at least in the same year. So this would have been a more realistic pairing for anybody that has an older system like this. Now, with the new graphics card at hand, we obviously need to tear the system down. So I'm going to tear this down, get all the parts out that we're going to keep, and then we'll go through all the things that we're actually going to get rid of. Now with the system torn down, we can see that in these older systems, once you get rid of all that old junk, the old big cases, the CD drives, the DVD drives, there's actually not a lot really to the system. We've got the motherboard here with the CPU installed. And as you can see, it's this tiny little H110 board. Now you can purchase boards just like this. They are very entry level. They don't really offer that many features, particularly when it comes to things like headers and that. And you very often find them in kind of pre-builds from not from your Dells and stuff like that, but you're more kind of third party kind of companies. But they tend to get the job done and they will work perfectly fine. So that's exactly what we're going to be using. We have given it a little bit of a dust. And of course, we've left the CPU installed. But aside from that, we have our DDR4 RAM. Now, this is not fancy RAM at all. It's reasonably slow, but it is DDR4 HyperX or Fury HyperX. And it's not bad. It actually works quite well. And it's more than enough for this system. We've also given that a little bit of a dust. We do have our Samsung solid state drive here. It's an 860 Evo, 250 gigabyte. That's more than enough for an operating system. And as we showed in our previous video where we actually got this system up and running, it was more than enough to install a couple of games and actually get them playing perfectly fine. We are ditching the uh, stock cooler. Now this is the stock cooler from Intel, of course. It probably came with that CPU at some point and they are terrible. They're not very good at cooling. Well, for an i5 processor, they're reasonably okay, but they are loud and they're not very good looking. So that's not really going to go with our system. So we're going to get rid of that cooler. We also got rid of the case and obviously everything else that was in it, including the case fans. We're going to get some new ones of them too. But then we've got our GTX 980 Ti. We're going to be installing that in the system. And we are keeping our EVGA 750 watt power supply. The power supply is kind of irrelevant in the whole of this because in most modern cases, the cabling is all hidden and stuff like that. So if you don't have nice black cables or a modular system like this one, you got to be perfectly fine because there's going to be places to hide things. And that brings us to the new parts. To be able to get this system looking nice and new and modern, of course, we need a new case. We need some new fans. We need a new cooler. And for that, we reached out to our friends at Techware to see if they could help. And as soon as they heard we were doing this kind of build, they got pretty excited and really wanted to help out. So they sent along a number of things. For the case, we have this Techware Forge L. It is a mid tower ATX case that came with four ARGB fans pre-installed. So we've got our cooling and our case sorted. And then for the cooler, they also sent along this Mirage 360. Now this is a pretty decent 360 millimeter all-in-one cooler. And of course the case is oversized, the cooler is oversized, and there is a bit of a reason for that. When we were discussing how we actually wanted to proceed with this video and get this system looking modern, we decided to oversize on all the new parts to provide a bit of future proofing. And that's where some of our tips and tricks are actually gonna come in. Installing a motherboard of this size into a case of this size, of course, is gonna leave lots of spare space. So we're gonna go through some tips and tricks on how you actually kind of divert the iOS Away from it and still get the system looking good. So we've got the motherboard installed and as you can see this tiny little motherboard looks kind of lost in this kind of size case and 
We'll obviously tackle that when we come to doing some of the tips and tricks on how we can actually fill up some of that space. But the next thing that we need to do is, of course, install the power supply. We'll get that installed, we'll get the cables and everything run, and then we'll start taking a look at the cooler. One of the great things about actually using a case just like this one is that it gives you plenty of space to be able to hide things. Our power supply is going to be installed into the bottom, into the basement here. And of course, in this case, we also do have the nice fan hub. That's actually going to be really helpful to kind of hide things away and also power all of the RGB because motherboards of this age didn't have ARGB connections. We also have these two little plates here which is going to give us the ability if we just remove it to install our uh, SSDs because we are using a SATA SSD. We don't have any NVMe slots on this board so hopefully we can hide as much as we can in the back and you're not going to be able to see it. It's going to keep a nice clean modern look in the front. Now because our power supply is actually quite a large power supply the EVGA ones have got a little bit more length on them than others. I've had to move this little bay at the bottom here. That's our hard drive bay. We're not actually going to be using that because as if you remember the old system, the hard drive that was provided in it was a two terabyte drive, but it's got bad sectors on it and it didn't actually work very well. But we are gonna remove the uh, little plastic bag with all the accessories for the case because I don't want them rattling around in there. So we'll drop them over there and we'll put the little tray back in because we don't wanna lose that. But it goes to show that you can on these kind of cases, move things around just to be able to fit even more modern things in. And this fits a uh, nice and snug. So we've now got all the power cables actually installed onto the motherboard all the big chunky ones are in and we run everything that we can we do need to do a little bit of cable management in here we could do a much better job than this to be honest it is a shame that the uh, controller that they've installed is a little bit wonky it means that we can't really get straight lines i'm sure we could probably remove it but we're not going to for this video uh, we do need to connect up our irgb but our power supply is in we've also installed our ssd it is plugged into the power at the moment we need to run the sata cable but the next thing that we're actually going to do is actually get the cooler installed and this is where one of the first tips comes in the motherboard is actually quite small in this case and we've got this extended cable going on over there the beauty of the case of this size and this is one of the reasons why we're kind of really oversizing things more than anything is that we can get a great big cooler just like this one from Techware. And to be honest, this is actually a very nice cooler. It does come with fans that match or are identical to the ones that come in the case. So you've got no problem actually hooking them up into the system, getting them hooked up into the controller that's built in. It did come with the controller itself if you buy it separately, but if you get the case, you don't need that because you're, you're already gonna have one. It also does accept a 360 millimeter radiator in the top, and that's exactly where we're gonna install it. We're gonna install this radiator into the top of the case. And then hopefully these pipes, as they come down, they're actually gonna take a bit of space. We'll just pop that down there for a minute. The pipes should actually run from here down and across this piece here. So it should kind of take your eye away from all the space in the back. I'm gonna get this installed. We've already built the bracket. We've all got it hooked up. We'll just get it onto the motherboard and then you guys will see what we mean. We've got the cooler installed now and it is a little bit of a tight fit in this case but I actually really like that. I think it looks really snug in the case and it doesn't leave any more gaps which is exactly what we want particularly for this type of build. We can also see that as I said before the pipes running from the front here all the way across to the cooler itself which by the way is a pretty stunning cooler and we'll show you that once we actually get the system up and running. They do kind of take away from the actual massive space that is in the front of this case which we're going to use for upgrade space for later. It's got a kind of future proof that what kind of motherboards and things we can put in here. But it kind of takes that away from the eye. You could get some nice little uh, different colored cable ties that are going to go around these pipes just to kind of take that eye away from it a little bit more. But it also covers up the power cable, the 24 pin that goes through on there, which does have quite a bit of length of it. I don't know why they didn't actually put an extra slot in the case there. Maybe because they didn't expect anybody to be doing this when they designed the case, but we do weird things here and this is exactly what we're doing. So I think it's actually looking or starting to look pretty good now. But of course, the last thing that we need to install now is of course the graphics card. And for the graphics card, we are going to be installing the 980 Ti. Now there is another little issue here when we come to do this, because if we actually install the graphics card as we normally would, just like this, even though it looks pretty good there, it could look a little bit better and that's because we're going to have this huge space at the bottom and the things that we're going to be able to see when we do that are all these extra cables that kind of come out of the basement and up towards the motherboard. Normally your motherboard would be at the bottom if you had an ATX board but as isn't so we're going to have to actually do something about this and to do that I think we've got the perfect thing. Now this is a vertical mount from Cooler Master it's just one that we actually have here in the studio and I think this is going to work perfectly in this system. All you need to do with these is just to get them to install is they go into the system like that and they allow you to vertically mount your GPU sideways. 
With this case as well, we do have the extra feature where we can remove these back panels here, which is perfect for this mount because this mount actually does fit straight into the back. And then we have a little bit of adjustment on it so we can actually kind of fill more space in with the graphics card if we actually want to. So to get this installed, all we need is a screwdriver and we need to just remove all of these panels in here. We will then install the graphics card onto the vertical mount itself. Screw the graphics card into the actual mount as if we are screwing it into the case, just so it keeps it nice and secure. Then we just need to install it into the case. We'll move our power cables out of the way for now. The PCI Express cable will go into the PCI Express port up the top on the motherboard. So we'll insert that first. And then you just locate this into the system as you would do with the graphics card if it was actually being installed this way. And as I said before, if we just undo these little screws at the top of the vertical mount, we can actually slide our GPU back and forward. So we can pretty much take it to wherever we want to fill in the space. I'm just gonna kind of just level it there, I think, just so it's reasonably in the middle. It does have full access at the back, so we can still get all the cables on, but then we just tighten up the screws. And there we do have it. We have our graphics card installed with a vertical mount. It's got plenty of distance away from the glass because these mounts do actually kind of hover it center into the system, not right next to the glass. We've got our pipes from our all-in-one cooler, which are obviously taking our eye away from the big space at the top. And I think that looks look fantastic. You wouldn't actually recognize this machine as being a machine from around 2015. It, it looks absolutely brand new. And there we have it. This is now the system looking brand new. You wouldn't even tell that this is an older sixth generation system. And of course, you also get to do the nice little peels, even though you are an older system owner. We can just peel off this little uh, sticky there. And we've got this nice, gorgeous all-in-one cooler with its ARGB lighting and its infinity mirror going. This actual setup didn't really cost a lot if you were to go and purchase it. I mean, a lot of people would look at this and say, why would you spend that much money on an old 6th gen Intel system? But for many people out there, they do actually like the system that they have. It performs and does everything they want it to, and they just want it to look a little bit more modern. And here are some tips and tricks on how to do that. I want to thank Techware for sending along these parts, the all-in-one cooler, the case, it did come with the fans that are already installed in it and they look absolutely amazing and they really just give the system a little bit of a pop. Let me know in the comments what you think of the system that we've done. Did you learn any tips and tricks on this? I know that it could help the uh, builders and flippers out there who want to kind of turn old machines into a little bit of profit. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see where we take this machine next. You guys asked us to do a bit of an upgrade on it and I'm sure all the new components will really support that. We're going to do it soon so make sure you do and I'm sure as always we'll catch you guys in the next one.